I'm going to do one more example of Fourier series because I want to illustrate one more trick. And let's just do a square pulse. But not a simple, highly symmetric square pulse. Let's do one that has a large x domain like that. And I don't need a very big y one like that. So x is going to go from L to minus L. And then the pulse will just be um, to L over 8. Something like that. And the height of the pulse we'll just call h. OK, so it gets up to h on the y-axis uh, from 0 to l over 8. And then it's 0 everywhere else. So it's just a, sh a small pulse in the domain minus l to l, like that. OK? So we want to describe that with our general Fourier series. So we'll start with a naught. That was the constant term. Again, a naught. And it was equal to 1 over L times the integral from minus L to L of the function y of x dx. But we're in trouble here because this is not an analytic function we can just write down. Right? It's not a line. It's not a sine. It's not e to the x. It's this thing that we've defined piecewise. So it's 0 here, and then it's h here, and then it's 0 here. So the way you deal with this is you remember what this squiggly line means. Right? The squiggly line for the integral is an s because it means sum. Right? So since this is really summing up all the parts along x, all the dx's along the x-axis, we can split it into three integrals. So we can also write it as a naught equals 1 over l times the integral from minus l to 0. And there, it's 0. So we can basically ignore that part. And then plus 1 over l times the integral from 0 to L over 8, and it's just H. OK, that's not such a bad integral. And then the other part is the integral is 1 over L integral from L over 8 to L, again, is 0. Right, that's right there. So you can split it up that way. If you have a sort of a piecewise defined function, you can just split up your integral, make your life easier. And these two parts we can ignore. So a naught is going to be the integral of h is hx. So it's 1 over l hx evaluated from 0 to l over 8. So it is l's cancel. It is h over 8. So that's the trick, breaking up the integral. Let's go ahead and do the ANs. Let's see, the ANs are the um, cosine harmonics. So AN is going to be 1 over L times the integral from minus L to 0 of the function times the cosine harmonics. But that's still just 0. Right? I mean, 0 times that. You can still ignore that part. Plus the integral from, let's see, um, 0 to L over 8, and now here, 1 over L, it's H times the cosine of those harmonics, plus 1 over L times the integral from L over 8 to L of, again, 0 times the cosine harmonics, n pi over L x. So 0, 0, the only thing that matters is this. So then we have, what, H over L are the constant parts. And the integral of cosine is sine, but we have to do pull out an L over n pi sine n pi over L x. And evaluate that from 0 to L over 8. Let's see. So um, those Ls cancel. It's h over n pi. And then we plug in L over 8 here. Those go away. It's sine of n pi over 8 minus, and then we do all this with 0. The sine of 0 is 0. Right? So here we have a n. The a n's look like that. 
h over n pi sine of n pi over 8. I got it right. Um, the b ends. I'm just going to give you the answer. And you can do it for fun, because now you see what to do. You just break up the integral. And only the middle term will give you anything. This one's a little more complicated. Both limits end up mattering. But I'll give you the answer. h over n pi cosine n pi over 8 minus 1. There's the b ends. So you can do that integral, get that answer. And if you're really into it, you can write a little program to start building up this series and see that it really does make a pulse that looks like that.